firefighters of Reddit what's the dumbest person you had to save in a stupid situation? Austin. TX. Head. Circa 1990. A little girl needs to use the toilet. She locks the door. Manages to get onto the toilet and use it all by herself. She's a big girl after all. But. The toilet is tall. And getting down is scary. Better wait for mom to come help. Except. She can't get in. Because the little idiot locked the door. And is too scared of the 5 inches from her feet to the floor. And so just sits there crying. While sitting on the toilet. The firemen break down the door and the little girl is saved. God damn I was a stupid kid. Edit. Who oh boy this blow up. I'll try to answer questions I was asked. And provide clarification. So y'all can stop asking. I was really little guys. Like. 3. Maybe 4. This was a single use bathroom. Not the one with stalls. So when I locked it. It was an actual door. I don't recall which specific head. But probably Riverside or 7th Street. Why didn't they use a key? Or unscrew the door? Good question. Not something I asked at the time of course. But when I was older I thought the same things. And shrugged it off as. Someone had to have tried that. It wasn't possible for one reason or another. So they called the fireman. Edit 2. I just came out of watching Ready or Not. Shit was great. You all should see it. A motorist had a bad alternator and the car died. While she slash he was driving. The electric lock control stopped working. We were dispatched for a person trapped in a motor vehicle. On arrival. The advice was given to manually lift the lock knob. You can easily tell the ones who will not survive the first 24 hours of the zombie apocalypse. Two bikini clad girls had to be rescued from a swift moving river in a canoe. Neither girl brought a life vest or a paddle. My dad was witness to someone being stupid and rescued by a firefighter. I posted this to the Tales from Tech Support subreddit a while ago. Here's a copy slash paste. My dad worked for IBM's as slash 400, a mainframe system, tech support division for over 10 years, 1992 to 2003. A customer called in because he needed to run a report and send it out to the network printer. For whatever reason, the report was failing to generate and the guy on the phone was freaking out because some corporate big wig demand that this report be printed and on his desk by 3 p.m. Just another day at work. About 10 minutes into the call my dad starts to hear this strange high pitched noise in the background. Dad. UHH. If you don't mind my asking. What's that noise at the background? Caller. Oh. That's the fire alarm. Fire alarm. Yeah. The building is on fire. Far be it from me to tell you what to do. But shouldn't you get out of there? Dan. You don't understand. I have to get this report printed. Now are you going to help me or not? So they continue to troubleshoot the issue. A few minutes after that my dad hears shouting in the background point dad. UMN. There seems to be a lot of yelling in the background. Is everything okay? Caller. Yeah. It's fine. It's just the firefighters evacuating the building. Shouldn't you get out of there too? Dan I absolutely have to get this report printed. Are you going to help me? I'm not sure that I should. We pay our support contract. I have to get this printed. And you have to help me. It's almost 3 p.m. It's just a report I don't think it's worth risking your life. The caller starts to get furious when the shouting in the background gets much louder. A firefighter has come over to the guy on the phone and starts barking orders at him to get out of the building. The caller tells the firefighter look, I have to print this report before 3p and I can't leave until it's printed. Over the phone dad hears the firefighter scream, I don't give a damn about your goddamned report the building is on fire. Now move, there's a scuffling noise and the phone handset on the other end drops to the ground as the firefighter physically drags the caller away. After that, all dad could hear was the sound of the fire alarm and various crackling noises. Needless to say, the report did not get printed by 3pm. Former fire and rescue firefighter here have helped release several dogs and children stuck in the mechanism part of a recliner chair. Also a bird stuck in a tree. Go figure. I was a volunteer firefighter many years back. One summer. After a long period of no rain. Two good old boys decide to have a few. Dozen. 
beers and take their jeep into a nearby field to go off-roading. Well. Two feet. Tall corn stalks that are bone dry wind up getting jammed up into the undercarriage. Which, on a 90 plus degree day, turns out to be hot enough to ignite a fire. The owner of the field sees the situation unfolding from their house and calls for fire and police. Given the proximity to my location, I go directly to the scene after hearing the page go out and see these two assholes trying to drive the jeep faster and faster to put the fire out. Eventually, the engine gives out, but they won't leave the car. I physically had to reach in, burning my arms in the process since I didn't respond to the station first to get my turnout gear and pull them out somehow. They decided that remaining in the car would slow down the flames. And because they thought it was a good idea to continue driving a burning vehicle around a dry field, we now have a significant brush fire and have to call mutual aid from another county to help douse the fire. State police get involved. I have a nice trip to the hospital. And our souls lose their jeep and the remainder of their booze. So no shit. There I was. Wavy ye old memory crossfade effect. We got a call about a little kid stuck in a bathtub. Nobody could make heads or tails of how a child can get physically stuck in a bathtub. So we rocked up in one of our engines and had a look. What had happened was that the child, almost 3 years old, had been left in the bath to play while it drained. The drain had a screwed down sieve in it with 5 holes. Kiddo had 5 fingers and must have thought it a good idea to jam them into said holes. Of course, they swelled up and got stuck. So now we had a kid attached to a bathtub drain, and no way to get at the screw holding in there. A buddy and me were sent down to get earplugs, a dog plushie, a spare helmet, safety goggles, an angle grinder, gas powered, a large hammer. We filled the tub back up a bit. Enough so kiddo's hand was covered in water for cooling. We gave him the plushie, with instructions, to make sure it doesn't get wet. Gave him earplugs and a real life fireman's helmet, TM and went to town. Four quick cuts around the drain hole, then bash in the tiles, and finally another cut through the drain. We then transported the boy slash tub hybrid to the hospital for dehybridization, since the fingers had become quite blue, and we didn't want to induce tourniquet removal syndrome without access to proper medical care. The little guy joined the youth fire department, as soon as he was old enough, we must have left a good impression. Not me but dad was a firefighter and Nick and once responded to a call at a Chinese food restaurant where the owner's walkway was iced over. He apparently didn't speak very good English and maybe misunderstood the job of a fireman. Genuinely don't know. They salted down his front walkway for him and explained that this was 100% not their job. They all had a good laugh and the guy gave them all free egg rolls. PPL always used to ask him questions about crazy calls and he never enjoyed talking about that, so he would always tell that story. Happened in 99 still makes me laugh to this day 20 years later. Eater, if you plan on commenting something along the lines of 20 years ago. Z-O-M-G. I'm old. Screw you for reminding me. I assure you roughly 40 other people have already beaten you to the punch. I get it. 99 doesn't feel that long ago. Let's all move on lol. It's interesting that that's what so many people took away from this story. Dude picked up a metal ring from a hardware store in lieu of paying for an actual cock ring. It got stuck. He went to the hospital. The hospital called the fire department because a Dremel tool turned out to be the right tool for the job. It wasn't really his fault. But we had an old guy in a nursing home get his balls stuck in a shower chair. Had a drunk guy in Antarctica chase a penguin. Penguin stuck his beak through the offending drunk guy's calf. He got sent home. And a report on international treaty breach wound up on some congress member's desk. Oh McMurdo. How I miss thee. To I can recall. One specific. The specific one was a young girl around teenage years who decided those toddler swings with the seat you stick their legs through like a little basket, so they can't fall out was made for a teenage girl. She got stuck and lost blood flow to her legs. We had to cut her down and get her to a hospital to have it safely removed due to it basically becoming a tourniquet on both her legs. The other is general. 
but it's people who didn't wear a seatbelt and the people they killed as a result. You have less control of the vehicle when you're not being held in place, so those wrecks are more common as the first sign of trouble your but moves in the seat and reduces your ability to control the vehicle. You also become a projectile. If you're lucky you only kill yourself. If you're not you wind up bouncing around and killing a passenger. Also the leading cause of partial ejections and re-entry to vehicles, since nothing was holding them to the seats. So many times I could have just been there cutting someone out of a seat and them being barely beat up but instead they had been scalped and died or hit their kid or spouse or other family member or friend and killed them. One in particular I remember was a large man not wearing a seat belt in an overturned truck. He woke up while we were working on him cutting the passenger side up to get down to him as the vehicle was on its side driver side down. He kept asking us how his son was. At first we didn't get it. Then we realized he was laying on his 15 to 16 year old son and due to the man's size we didn't see him. The son was wearing a seat belt, but he died because his father smashed into him and smothered him to death while we worked rather than just wear a seat belt extender so his seat belt fit. Also don't lie to us about if you wore it. Your seat belt won't fire the pretensioners if they are not engaged in the slot. They are designed that way. There is a circuit that is completed by the best being clicked in place which is also how your car knows your passengers are wearing a seat belt or not and sets off that obnoxious alarm. There is also a sensor in the passenger front seat of most modern vehicles to detect the weight of a small person which is why your sodas or pizzas it whatever set off the alarm. Just wear the damn seat belt and don't lie. If you were wearing it, I won't be able to pull tons of slack on it when I arrive. Guess what goes in the report as the determining factor your insurance sees as to if you should have your medical covered as a result of an accident? Yup. I don't know what they do with their information, but I have to write it in the report. Source, state vehicle rescue technician and firefighter. Mostly volunteer at this point. This is my dad's story, not mine. But I've heard it so many times I think I can accurately tell it here. My dad was on the Boston Fire Department for a little over 35 years. For 13 of those years, he worked at a fire station in Dorchester. In Dorchester, there is a zoo, the Franklin Park Zoo. One morning in late September, they get a call to the Franklin Park Zoo for a young girl mauled by a gorilla. This is the sort of call they'd get all the time. Gorilla jumps at the glass. Kid gets scared. Parents panic and call 9 double one. So they hop in the truck and ride on over. It's one of those kinda foggy early fall mornings as they walk into the zoo. A couple of the other firefighters start walking into the zoo as my dad notices a man sitting on a bench holding a little girl in his arms. Assuming this is what the call is for. He walks over to the man. The little girl has a scrape on her forehead and she's crying but is otherwise fine. The man looks like he just saw a ghost. So my dad asks the guy what's going on. The man just says little joe is out. My dad says what does that mean? The man just repeats little joe is out so my dad says who the fuck is little joe? Little joe is a 500 pound adolescent male silverback gorilla. Loose in the streets of Boston. It's right about now that my dad realizes that he's not exactly qualified to handle a gorilla. But he doesn't know who to call. So he calls everyone. Two minutes later the fire chief shows up. Not knowing what the call was about. Yet am jumps out of his car saying mark mark it's this about a fucking gorilla my dad says yeah but how'd you hear that the chief says he's standing at the bus stop on sever street now the swat team shows up hats on backwards m16s in hand and my dad being the smartest he is looks at the sergeant and says hey i don't think this thing is armed he caught a bit of flack for that later on animal control and the swat team work together to take down little joe it took 14 tranquilizer darts before he finally went unconscious little joe is still alive and well at the franklin park zoo and here's a picture of him at the bus stop for those of you who don't believe me obligatory not a fireman but they were most definitely involved i used to work in a new york city public grammar school over the summers to pay for college back in the 90s one of the full-time employees was a nice guy but stupid. And I don't mean he was slow or anything. He just did dumb shit because he was careless. 
one time he loaded up a trailer with like 25 gallons of gas and was driving it back through the main school parking lot. He didn't realize that container cracked open and spilled all 25 gallons in the parking lot. He didn't want to get in trouble, so he thought the best way to get rid of the evidence was to set the gas on fire. He didn't realize that burning gas gives off a lot of black smoke, and a gigantic cloud of black smoke coming from a school generally attracts a lot of attention from first responders. Panicking. He tries to put the flaming lake of gas out by driving over it with his car. The fire department gets there, screaming at him to stop driving his car through flaming gasoline. They finally get the fire out and just screamed at this guy for like 25 minutes. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen.